Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too. So we get another opportunity to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. So here we are today. Now we've passed the solstice, and even though the physical attributes of light begin to return, days are starting to get longer now. But remember, we're not out of the woods. The ease with which chaos can reassert itself and make people feel panic or terror, it's always there because it's part of life. Yoga points you towards kaya sampat, the treasure of the body. There's so much that we can learn from movement in our anatomy. And it's not just yoga, of course. The joy of movement, if you look at beautiful dancers or people who do sports, any kind of kinesthetic connection that you have brings out so much. And it's important to realize that if you're going to retire from worry, retire from complaining, if you're going to retire from just having a life of greedy seeking possessions and security, and just live the life that's offered to you and the life that you create, you're going to train your mind, your body, and your heart. Train your mind so it's not closed but open. Train your body so it's flexible not inflexible, and train your heart so it's open and not closed, not constricted. The heart is like a muscle. It can get tight like everything else. And so although we ascend to what we think is something transcendent, we descend into compassion and how we treat other people. <clears throat> and that means part of us has to learn how to marry the unwanted, marry the not beautiful, even though we're always trying to protect ourselves from our own vulnerability, which I think is impossible. Obviously, you want to protect yourself from things that are detrimental, toxic, and could hurt you. But you can't really protect yourself from being exposed to those things in the broader sense of life. And we're not supposed to break our link with other people or with the world itself. As the poet says, when the mind wants to break its link with the world, it still holds on to one thing. So to fully embrace reality and find out that we have a biological and psychological libido, an energy, vitality for living fully and confronting these things. Uh, in yoga, it's called the kundalini, the energy of consciousness. And as you expand your own awareness of what consciousness is, you move through these different levels where you're not as focused anymore on solely surviving or enjoying or developing power, a dominant psychology, or even intimacy in relationships, as you move towards questing for a deeper truth and you start to trust your intuition more about the choices you make that are felt in your heart and your gut, that moves you towards a kind of transcendent insight. It takes you into something beyond. And when I say beyond, I don't mean something further. You give up the idea of something further in order to be here, to be alive right now in this present moment. So... That's why they say God is a consuming fire. This has to be the all-important, overarching harmony that grips you in your life. When you're a, an enthusiastic, supreme student in yoga, it's called Tivra Samvegan. Everything is thrown, is grist for the mill of this kind of fire. And uh, yes, there has to be sacrifices for sure. But what you sacrifice is, first of all, your narcissistic grandiosity. It isn't all about you. And also, you give up with the things that you'd be happier without. So... To give up in order to gain is not really a sacrifice, but that's really what happens. You get rid of the stuff that holds you back, that doesn't feel good, and uh, you learn. You learn to give. Everyone has gifts. So what I would say is get rid of the depressive spirit that forgets to dance, forgets to groove, forgets to play with it. In yoga, it's called the lila, the dance of life. And don't hose yourself down. Don't put asbestos all over your life in order not to feel, because we all have so much love. It's frightening to realize how much we could love, not just one person, so many people, so many things in life, life itself. And that's part of marrying the not beautiful and taking that with you. So we all long for eyes of blessing. And if you haven't gotten it from someone, well, I'd give it to you if you contact me. But it's important to also bless other people 
and recognize what I call hunger significance. Everybody wants to be acknowledged, approved of. Everybody wants to feel like they belong. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to have integrity unless something has happened along the way to jade their understanding and no longer believe in themselves. So most of you are leaders in different ways. And you know, it's not only important for you to believe in yourself because a lot of times leaders doubt themselves, which is okay. The really important thing is don't doubt the people in your community. Have faith in them, have trust in them. I always like to say, I have people in my life who I have faith in and who have faith in me. People who I trust and people who trust me. People who I give to and people who give to me. And that's the way you, you create what I call social capital. So build that into your life and that's the way you transform your life fire. All right? So we'll see you tomorrow. Look with the eyes of blessing at everybody you meet.